dang five people that fast watching <laughs> in five in less than five seconds hat maker how you doing buddy first one i'm seeing billy smith hello from east tennessee glad to have y'all on here <clears throat> charlie polly How's everybody doing tonight? Appreciate everybody jumping on here. We got eight watching already. Pretty quick. Thought we was gonna be a little late with our live video tonight. Um, had some coyotes out and about, and we've had some chickens disappearing here recently. So we had to go out and run down, uh, check on the coyote situation. And we got a neighbor's got a horse. The coyotes we got a hold of, so we was out there just checking on the horse. But uh, it's all good. Everything's good to go. Josh Taylor, what's up? Ray Boys, Colton Newton, knows the ground. There he is. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Hello from Central Texas, Jordan. Sandra Boardwine, how's it going? We have your squalor. Yes. I have it in my purse. We're going to mail out your squalor. Got your squalor there, buddy. Curtis Shelton, what's going on, buddy? Field staff, should be out coon hunting tonight, but he's not. <laughs> We should all be out coon hunting. Hat maker says, "What kind of chicken you got?" Uh, I don't know what kind they are. I don't know. They're white and black. And we tan. got white and black and tan ones. I can tell you that much. I don't know what our tractor supply sells. <clears throat> David Argo, how you doing? Kentucky Hunter, how's it doing? Wagner Moore, Bobby Huggins, we're doing good, buddy. Appreciate asking. Logan Dixon. Brent Soap, there he is. Mike Parr, what's going on? Jacob West, contest winner. Nose the ground, just stopped by to say hey, real quick. Not in the best place right now. Yeah, buddy, I don't want to spread your business for you, but everybody watching, say a little prayer for Nose the Ground Outdoors. Ron 12ism, how you doing? Coon Nation, see me at Walker Days. Yep, appreciate you, buddy. Trickle Creek Kennels, how you doing? Robert Adams, what's going on? That maker sounds sounds kind of like Silver Lace Wine Dots, LOL. <laughs> yeah, well, we got two white ones. We have a black one and then a tan one. And we had ducks. Ron McKay, what's going on? <laughs> Curtis Shelton says, I'm heading to meet up with part of the Deer Creek Cartel Boys, so ha. <laughs> well, I hope it goes better than last time. <coughs> Mud Lover, nice meeting you, Walker Days. You too, buddy. Appreciate you. Ryan Hamilton, Gage Gibson. Uh, when are we going hunting, Logan says. I don't know, buddy. We'll get around to it. Bobby Huggins, sorry to hear you miss Walker Days. Out knows the ground. Anyway, be good, buddy. I'll hit you up tomorrow. So, yeah, holler at me, Austin. Be praying for you. Trickle Creek says, I'm in the woods with two dumb pups and an old dog. Not done. No good so far. Sounds like mine not last night. Oh, Alan Boykin. Oh, well, he says. Blue Tick Coonhounds, how you doing? Jarrett Bromfield, give Daystar Kennels a shout out. You got a uh, YouTube channel or just your kennel, Daystar Kennels? That's a pretty cool name. Y'all go check out Daystar Kennels. James Kenny, how you doing, buddy? All right, so I got a quick thing I want to talk about. Um, last week on our live video, we had a prayer request for Joe Eckerd's grandson, Garrett. And uh, we had some prayer right here live on the video. And uh, he was in surgery last week when he was praying for me. He had a tumor, and they went in and removed it. Well, Joe Eckerd's reached out to me today and let me know that uh, the test came back on the tumor they removed, and there was no cancer. Um, he's going to have scans about twice a year to make sure the tumor doesn't come back. But so far, answered prayers. Uh, Joe Ecker's grandson, Garrett, is healthy and doing quite well. So, glad to hear that. I know many of the Nightlife family members out there were praying for him. So, get the light on me better. <clears throat> Sean Milton, how you doing? Yep. Daystar Kennels on Facebook. Give them a shout out. If y'all are on Facebook, go by there and check them out and follow them. Billy Smith says, It was wet and rainy, so I left Walker Days Friday night, and so I did not stay for Saturday. Yeah, I tell you, that was uh, Walker Days. I don't know. That's uh, That event, it's, it has nothing to do with the people putting it on. 
but ever since they moved from Salisbury just the the vendors don't come around as much as they used to and um, you know there's not many guys hunting in it it's just uh, I don't know if it's a location of what it is but uh, Walker days is not doing as good as it used to do but uh, I know it's not a lack of effort on the guys that's putting on they are trying hard they're pushing it real hard they're talking about it they're spreading the word you know they work real hard setting it up and it's just not coming together and I wish it would but this year a lot of it had to do with the weather but uh, oh, let's see Chris Harness how you doing buddy Colton Noon when you gonna make another hunting video I went out last night hunting took hide and Nick's with me I filmed it but uh, we hunted hard, me and Will Green did, and Hyde never opened his mouth one time. Went to Polk County, hunted Will's property. I don't know if somebody, because we hadn't hunted all season long. Uh, we didn't get a single chance to hunt it because um, of deer season. That last night was my first time really back there, and I don't know if somebody had went in there and hunted it while I wasn't in there or what, cleared it out. Um, it's not a real big piece of property anyway. But, uh, yeah, went there last night. Hyde struck, or Hyde did not strike, but he run the entire country, checked every creek on the place, every ridge and every holler, and never said a word. So, what are you going to do? John Gilbert says, that's my God. Yes, sir, mine too. Answered prayers for Garrett, Joe Ecker's grandson. Robert Adams, how's Walker Day? <clears throat> well, I was talking about a man ago. It's, uh, we had a good time. Our booth done really good. We had a lot of sales. We had a ton of people come by. And meet us and shake our hands and talk to us so it was really a lot of fun i really enjoy it very much i enjoy seeing those our fans and our, and our not life family members so it's a lot of fun but uh in general the crowd is definitely way down uh there's not as many vendors there um i know like Kaylight, she was sick with the flu she didn't even make it she's coming all the way from texas um there's a couple light manufacturers did not make it down so you know just in general it's kind of going downhill but uh Hope for a better one next year, I guess. Charlie says he didn't think all the mooks was as good this year either. Yeah, it was down a little bit. Sure was. <clears throat> yeah, buddy, Sean, it's good to see you too. Wagner Moore says we bought an English from Walker Days. Yeah, there was a few dogs for sale. Okay, Sean, I'll message you, buddy. Billy Smith said I bought an old vintage... Shocking system at Walker Days for 40 bucks. What kind did you get, Billy? Oh. Alright, so now as far as tonight's topic, I didn't have anything specific I wanted to talk about tonight. Um Curse to the best Hello! Yet. <laughs> Little excited for Kirsten, are we? Are you are you embarrassed? No. No, okay. Oh, okay. Stevie May, what's going on, bud? Um, I didn't have any specific topic I want to talk about tonight. but um, So anyway, subscriber, pick. Y'all pick what you want to talk about. <laughs> she says she feels so special. Oh. She don't get that excited when I show up. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so you admit it, huh? No. She just likes me to be me. Redbone Mike, what's going on? Yep, so subscriber choice tonight, guys. Whatever y'all want to talk about, whether it be training questions, gear questions, gear reviews, uh, whatever y'all want to talk about, we will uh, we'll cover it. If you comment 90% of the time, I will respond here. Ray Boy says, finally got a six-month-old Walker male dog having to start all over. After my old dog died, it is rough. Fixing to hit the woods. Well, good luck tonight, buddy. Hope your pup works out for you and puts it on good. It is rough to start over when your old dog dies like that. Adam Montgomery, good evening. Kirsten says, you don't blow the horn. <laughs> I don't have a good air horn. <coughs> oh, sorry. I still got a call from when I had the flu there a couple weeks ago. Stevie Mace, I looked at a walker dog yesterday. Might buy him. You need to, buddy. You got the light. Uh, David Argo, any tips for young dogs and hollow trees? No, nah, man, best thing you can do is just uh, cast on from them and keep on hunting. I mean, a hollow tree, a den tree is the same thing as with meat on the outside, if you ask me. I mean, it's an accurate tree. You can't blame the dog for the coon finding a hole in the tree and getting in it. Um, I'd praise them up just a little bit, not as quite as hard as when it's on the outside, and uh, just cast them on from the tree. Keep on hunting. Billy Smith says it was a tritron. Billy, did you watch uh, last week? Was it last week? 
I, yeah, last week's uh, live video where I showed off all the old older hunting gear that I got. Is it real similar to one I had on there? Got 50 people watching. Uh, our proud new sponsor here. Not Pepsi. Nobody sponsors us. <laughs> Cold bad. Newton says you need to get some more dogs. Man, I got plenty of dogs. I got five. Uh, Wagner Moore said we ran <clears throat> Saturday night. We killed 12 possums. Dang. Man, you must have an impressive possum dog or something. Dang, 12 possums. That's a lot. Stevie says if I buy him, I'd have to buy a tracking system. LLS sports a money pit. Yeah, you know what the old saying goes. If you want to become a millionaire, coon hunting. You need to start out a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Brent Soap's the second best pop. Mountain Dew is the best. It is. I haven't had a Mountain Dew probably in about a year and a half. I was, I gotta admit, I had a problem. I was addicted to Mountain Dews. I drank tons of them every day, and uh, I had to quit that. Billy Smith says that was, and it was similar. Timothy Conley says, have you ever smoked a coon out of the tree? I've done it out of a den tree. I did it one time. Just one time. Real had a real tough, hard season. And uh, toward the end of the season, I got sick and tired of it. And that was when Hyde was trained Hyde. I smoked one out for him. I don't remember that. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he was there. Probably not. You never take me anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, I don't like to make a habit of it, though. If a coon's going to get to the den tree, uh, I just take it as he won that round. We'll get on to him another night. Sandra says, how to break a dog from going back to the same tree when you try to recast from tree. I just get between the dog and the tree and uh, give me a little switch or something. And that dog keeps coming back. I keep pushing them off that tree and claiming that tree is my own. I let them know right quick. If they come back to that tree, they're in a lot of trouble. And they're in, a, in for a world of punishment. Not that bad, but you know. <laughs> I definitely, definitely scold the dog. Won't let them on the tree. And it could be a wrestling match. You can be looping the tree over and over and over, keep them off of it. But I, I, I put a stop to it pretty quick. <clears throat> Wesley says, Wagner Moore, I need that possum dog to go with mine. <laughs> Stevie May says, you ever shot coons out of season and what was your reason? Yeah, just a couple times. And it's generally because of a pup. And it was on like a farmer who had crops, who had a lot of damage from coons and stuff, and they really wanted me to get rid of them. So, but I definitely don't make a habit of that. That's only happened a couple, couple few times. Josh Taylor says, all the old guys around here say you have to use your sock to smoke them out. They say if you, if the smoke don't get them, the stink will. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, we just built a little fire and put some wet leaves on top of it, and it worked out pretty good. Country Boy says, how do you stop a dog from carrying the coon? First off, I don't let them have the coon. When I put my hand on that coon, that coon's my property. They're not allowed to have it. Um, and basically, I just uh, I start out with a pup. It's the best thing to do. You get that coon, you tell them dead. If they won't let go of it, you take it like just a little bit of switch or a cloth part of your lead, and you just pop them on nose a couple of times and tell them let go of it. It's dead. And uh, that's like I done that with Nick's one night. We walked out of, uh, we was hunting South Carolina. We was about a mile deep. From the time I walked out, the time I got the truck, I had Nick's broke. Uh, first off, for the probably first quarter mile, I mean, she's tugging on it all the time. I kept having to pop her and pop her and pop her, make her let go of it. And then on about half a mile, she probably only grabbed at it a couple more times. And then from a half mile to a mile back to the truck, she grabbed it maybe once or twice. It was not bad at all. And since then, hadn't been an issue. <clears throat> Alan Thomason, what's the best light on the market right now? I'm highly partial to the Big Dog Genesis. That is all I use. I really love the Big Dog Genesis. Matt Williams up there in Ohio makes that light. It's super lightweight, um, weighs in just under a pound. It's got really good bright settings. You can get it with a uh, walking light, red and green. Um, that's a really awesome light. I love that. And also, recently, Dakota Lights come out with the Vertex, I think it's called. It looks like a really good light. I've had my hands on it at uh, Winter Classic and Walker Days. I have not went in the woods with it, but Dakota is known for making great lights, too. 
So, you know, um, I really like that light though. I would like to see it in the woods. Braden Bell says, how do you train a coon? Hell, man, that's a that's a long question right there. Uh, best thing you do is just start out with a pup. And up to about six months age, we like to work them just basically on their manners. Teach them how to lead, how to hush up at the kennel. Uh, we'd ride them around in the box a little bit, let them get used to the box. And um, that's basically work on that. At six months age, we start taking them in the woods with an experienced dog. They hang around our feet quite a bit, but they get their coordination down. And then eventually, they'll just start going off with the other dog. Then when they get where they're opening on track and treeing with the dog a little bit, we single them out and start hunting them solo. We don't do any... Uh, Coon feeders, casting the dogs on the feeders. We don't do that. We don't do any cage coons. Might do one at the very most. Let a dog see it when they're about eight months old. Um, I don't use any drags, no scent. It's just taking them to the woods and putting them in a position for the opportunity of their natural abilities to come out in. That's the main thing. And be patient. Hatmaker says, if you ever want a possum dog, for whatever reason, just get a red tick. I've had more red tick tree possums than coons. I mean, come on, it's kind of sad when a red bone outruns a red tick. Boy, you you looking for a fight? There's got to be some red tick guys on here somewhere. Oh, that's funny. Stevie May, would you ever consider making your own light? I'm not gonna rule it out, but uh, I've you know, being the fact that I'm friends with Matt and Big Dog, I've seen the process. I see how hard it is and the technology behind it. I mean, it's not really super hard, but you gotta have uh, you gotta have some money to invest in it. Um, if you're not gonna just buy parts off a shelf and throw them together, or if you're not gonna call up China and say, "Hey, make this light and throw my logo on," it, if you're gonna do like Big Dog, Dakota, Bright Eyes, and all them other guys that actually make their own light. You got to have some money to, um, you know, get some things machined and this, that, and the other. And so I'm not going to rule it out, but uh, it would definitely be, you know, one of those way on the back, more back burner type of deals. But uh, I would like to take some money and actually build my own lot just for myself one time. Uh, that way I know it had absolutely every single thing I wanted to have. And it'd probably cost me six, seven hundred dollars to build it. But, uh,. <clears throat> Country Boys says, what's the best way to keep coyotes away? I have a big coyote problem. Um, well, I'll be honest with you, there's not a whole lot you can do. I will tell you one tip. This right here, we sell these on our website. This is a dog beacon collar light. And this light right here slips on your GPS collar. And this is the white version. It comes in white, red, blue, green, and amber. But from what we hear from guys who have a bad coyote problem, if they run the white on their dog's collars, I mean, it lights up solid or it blinks, that coyotes tend to see this and see it as like somebody's flashlight walking through the woods and they leave the dogs alone more often than not. Um, that's just what we're hearing. I have no personal experience with that. Um, but it's also really cheap insurance if you're hunting near roads and stuff. Uh, it lets your dog be seen by cars and stuff. It helps out a lot. And 18 bucks. Um, you can't really beat it. So if you're interested in one of these, you want to give it a try. I've got the whites in stock. You can go to nightlifekiln.com, uh, sport dog beacon collar lights, or if you also want uh, red, blue, and green, I have those in stock as well. Um, this really good investment. I don't run a dog without some kind of beacon light on its collar. And you can run multiple colors for each of individual dog. That way you can kind of, if you see them across the field or something, you know which is which without having to look at your tracking system. Robert Adams says he likes his K-Light Zoom. He bought a K-Light Zoom from me. That's another great light. Um, K-Light makes great lights. They've been around for a long time. Brent Soap says, have you always hunted walkers or have you hunted any other breed of hound? Uh, back when I was real real little, I had uh, black and tan. And uh, let's see here. I've had like two red bones, but they were kind of like rescue dog type situations. Took them in as rescue. I tried to hunt them, give them the opportunity, but they just didn't make. So uh, I ended up giving them to some bear hunters. But I uh, had, had a black tanner too when I was young, but they didn't work out either. Jimmy Williams says, I got three rib on pups out of some good stock. I'm new at this, so I can hunt. New at this, so can I hunt all three at a time or don't need to hunt one at a time? Yeah, if you got pups, the best thing to do is, is not hunt them together. Because all they're going to want to do is play in the woods. Um, they're not going to learn anything. Or they, they may in time, but it's going to take you a lot longer. 
pups always hunt separately that's the reason why if you see me going in the woods right now with other people um i'm either hunting with them and their pup or then they're hunting with me and my pup i'm not casting my pups in the woods with theirs <clears throat> Braden bell says hat maker hunting and fishing our red tech is pretty good tree coons sandra says only way a red tech will that if it's crossed with the walker Billy Smith said, I bought a full-blooded blue tick for $80, and he was only six months old at Walker Days. Pretty good deal. He's got papers with it. Yeah, hat maker. That's my experience with black and tans. My buddy, Tyrone, that passed away back in October, he that's all he runs, black and tans. He had a bunch of black and tans. So. Timber Hill says, hey, Nick and Kate. Bird Dog A2 says, I'm a walker guy, but how do you feel about crossbreeding nowadays? I'll be honest with you, I'm highly for it, and I'm actually, I am in search of an awesome, I mean an awesome blue tick female to breed hide to. Um, I think personally, some of the walker stuff, and I'm a walker man, don't get me wrong, <clears throat> but I think a lot of the walkers nowadays have just been bred to make money and sell pups off of not necessarily breeding uh the science behind the breeding is kind of went to the wayside people are just breeding to sell pups or make money off of some dog that made a grand night champ or whatever um so i honestly think you know back in the day my grandfather and all them they didn't really have anything pure-blooded all their stuff was mixed and they always swore by it because they said you kind of get the best of both breeds when you did that and i honestly think if you'd start crossing out to some other breeds now for a generation or two and keep your line going and then breed it back to like say walk across out the blue tick and then for a generation or two then come back to you know breed them with walkers again it would take you nearly a lifetime to get those dogs back almost full-blooded but i really think you could actually improve your bloodlines and the, the stock of hound that you have if you did that so that's my theory on it uh definitely not against them definitely for it but before i did it i would be highly uh, picky about who I bred to because I would in general if I was gonna breed hide to another female walker I'd have to hunt with her and uh, she would have to highly impress me So I think people are just in general are too careless with the breeding. So <clears throat> Excuse me guys uh, Jimmy Williams says what if you don't have an older dog to train pups? How can you train him without a drag or caged coon? Thanks. Uh, best thing to do, Jimmy, is you got some land. Go out there and put you a feeder on your land. Keep you the coons on your property. Don't hunt your pup on your feeder, though. You don't want to do that. But uh, cast your dog a few hundred yards from that feeder in the woods or go for a walk with your dog. And eventually your dog will find some scent, take off with it, do something with it. And it's a long, drawn-out process. It's going to take you a lot of time. you got to have a lot of patience with this. Don't rush it. Um, but if your dog has the natural ability in itself, which most hounds do to an extent, some are better than others, uh, just put it in the woods, put it around some coon scent, the natural ability will develop and come out in the dog. So, Wagner Moore says we have a donkey that chases coyotes away. Yeah, donkeys are a good thing to have. I know, uh, like we used to have deer leases down in Georgia, and um, they had cattle and stuff down there. I think for like every 20 or 30 head of cattle, they had one donkey. So, Hector says, hi from Italy. Wow, that's impressive. We got somebody here from Italy. Thank you for joining on, Hector. Appreciate you, buddy. Blue Tick Coonhound says, I got a blue tip, my first coon dog, trying to get in the coon hunting. Well, best of luck to you, buddy. I hope it works out for you. Uh, best thing you can do is uh, if you got a good mentor, you got somebody who is a true houndsman who can take you out and show you the ropes, that go a long way in the woods long way i think everybody getting into this sport needs to have a good mentor a good houndsman that can take them out and show them the ropes and uh, not lead them astray hatmaker says when i get my pup nobody around me has any dogs so my pup would have to learn by itself how would i go about taking him himself on the first hunt uh hatmaker um i just talked about that i don't want to repeat myself but if you didn't hear me comment below and i will repeat Charles Shepard, there he is. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Charles, I'd like to get down there and hunt that land you got sometime before season goes out. Robert Adams says, my dog don't go in the woods. 
I think this same Charles Shepard hunts with my dad. If it is, I want to hunt with you. If it's a different Charles Shepard, how you doing? <laughs> Robert Adams says, my dog don't go in the woods without them on sport dog beacon. Yep, true enough, man. Wesley Blevins, my dog is half German, short hair pointer, and half cur, and she'll show you a coon any night of the week. Okay, the question is, does she tree or does she point at the tree? <laughs> now, me and uh, me and uh, Kim seen a pointer down there at the Walker days, and we was joking about that. We said they probably wouldn't make good coon dogs, but do they tree or do they point? Brady says, "What do you think about red ticks? I think they're beautiful dogs." I've been around a couple that were pretty good. Never owned one, so, uh, but they are pretty dogs. Gage's got good advice there for a hat maker. Says, walk them down the creeks. Stevie says, I agree wholeheartedly. Most walker dogs are bred to comp hunt instead of just pleasure hunting. Yeah, and I think if we had more good pleasure hunting dogs, we'd actually end up having better comp dogs. Hat maker says, black, he's heard black tans good with a walker. Yep, I hear Walker Blue Tick makes a great cross. <clears throat> Jesse, Rachel, Rachel, are the Mutz collars one size fits all kind of thing? Yes, they are. Oh, hang on, I will grab one for you and I will show you guys. Okay, so let's talk about the Mutz collars for just a second. This right here is one of my personal Mutz collars. I got to put it on my system. Um, basically, what you have is right here. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, these rivets that go on here, they screw on. They don't clamp down like this rivet does. This rivet is permanent. But basically all you do is you put this around your dog and you tighten it down to where you know it's going to fit your dog pretty snug. Take you a magic marker or something and mark two lines across both sections of the collar so you know. Take it off your dog. <clears throat> go ahead and when you get ready, feed this through through the top side. And you'll notice it comes through the bottom just like that. Line your marks back up, and then you're going to take the two rivets that it comes with, put it through the collar, and tighten them down best you can. Now, if you're worried about the rivets coming loose, um, you can also um, put just a little bit of like nail polish or something on there. Don't put Loctite because that's going to make it impossible to ever get off. If your dog ever gains weight, you're going to want to be able to let this out, or if you run it hard through the season, you won't be able to tighten it up a notch or two. So you still want to be able to get them loose. Put some, you know, uh, nail polish or something on there. That'll keep the threads from letting go. But I have yet to put any on mine and yet to have any kind of issue. Uh, when you get done, you'll have a lot of slack in here. What I would advise is, is just make sure you got a couple holes, three or four holes on this side, and then cut the slack off. So if you have to let the, the collar out more, um, you've got plenty of room to do that. You can also get these with a D-ring that goes in between here. They're all around real good collars. We've been running them on our GPS systems for several months now. Uh, we sold a lot of these and we are having no issues out of them. Timber Hill says they're out in the woods right now with nothing going on yet. Well, good luck. Hope it changes for you. David, I want to cross my walker to a trig, but not sure on anyone with some that don't just breed for money. What is a trig? Deborah says, are you part Hispanic? Just curious. No, I am not. I'm a, uh, I don't know. I'm American. I go back to Irish descent. Indian. That's what you're getting from. Yeah, I do have some Cherokee back in me a little bit. My uh, grandmother, she was half Cherokee in me. My great grandmother, excuse me. Alan Thomason, have you ever hunted in North Carolina? Yeah, Tom, uh, I live in North Carolina. I live in Western North Carolina. So we hunt here all the time, buddy. Woody's Hangout, end of season creeping a few days away. Any end of season content for later? Man, we're out here, we're trying. We went last night, hunted hard, uh, took took Hyde and Nick's out with Will, and they covered the country over and didn't even get a strike. I mean, they covered the whole mountain, checked. They went up and down every creek, every ridge, every holler. I mean, Hyde checked that mountain better than I've ever seen him check it. Not a single strike. So, uh, we have until Thursday in North Carolina. And our coup season run out and i think we have until the 15th of march in south carolina so we still got a half a month season to go blue tick says his papa hunts walkers well your papa's a smart man no, i'm just joking with you he is a smart man i'm sure hat maker says yes sir i did hear it i had put the question up before you answer good glad you heard it buddy just want to make sure 
<clears throat> Blue Tick says his grandpa helps him a lot. That's a good thing. To have a good mentor to show you the ropes. That's key. Charles, I appreciate it, buddy. I'll let you know. Maybe uh, get into it sometime next weekend or something. When the water goes down, Charles. I know I went by your property there. We hunted the other day on the entry, and shoo, man, the water was extremely high. Case and Thomas, how you doing, buddy? Ray Boys Outdoors says, I had a red bone mixed with black and tan. He was quick, and when a coon hit the ground, he went in to kill one of my buddies, bred his female dog to him, and then pups made some of the best bear dogs. I tell you, black and tan and blue ticks seem to have a lot of grit. Wesley says his dog silent trees. That can be hard to deal with sometimes. Finley River. There he is. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Nick, get a Finley River hound. <laughs> I'll talk to you back. When I get uh, these pups of mine trained up a little better, we'll look into the next go-round. Hatmaker says, I do know one person that may have a blue tick female with good bloodlines, or he may know someone who does if you want me to look into it. Yeah, you can, buddy. I'm not really concerned about bloodlines. My main thing is I want to go in the woods. I want to see the dog work. I really don't care what the bloodline is. Um, I mean, I'd be great to have some good bloodline, I guess, in it. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to look at the papers till I buy the dog, honestly. I'm going to hunt with the dog. I mean, until I breed with it or whatever. Um, I want to hunt with the dog, and it's going to have to blow my mind, really impress me. And then I'd want to breed to it. Uh, Billy Smith said, hey, you stopped black and tan from running a mile without treeing a coon. I don't know, man. Have you got plenty of coon around where you're hunting? Um, if you have plenty of coon, you know it's blowing by coon. Um, if you got thin coon, maybe it's having to go that far to find one. Brain says, do you still have tough? Yes, I do. Took tough out there a couple weeks ago. Had him down there in the swamp. Uh, Timber Hill says, their season ends March 15th. Adam says, Triggs. Or foxhounds, but some will tree when they get older. Some bear hunters use them to crossbred for faster dogs. I'll be honest with you, I had a friend of mine, um, an old friend of mine, he had a foxhound, and that female, she was the best coon dog I ever laid my eyes on. No, well, best female coon dog I've ever laid my eyes on. She was hammered down, awesome dog. Um, and she was 100% uh, foxhound. Timber Hale says her hunter dog just struck in. Hope he throws him up quick. Kirkston Weaver says, "Do you know where I can get a decent coon hound? Coon hound? No, nah, man, they're uh, they're hard to find. I tell you, this time of year, though, the season come around, you're gonna find a lot of dogs for sale. And my advice to you: don't buy nothing without going in the woods with it, because there's gonna be a lot of guys who've got a lot of good for nothing dogs that are trying to get rid of. And unfortunately, people out there will tell you anything just to get rid of a dog. Some people will. So, uh, best thing I tell you, man, make sure." You hunt with anything before you buy it. Gage Gibson, Dunny Catfishing Lady. Nope, I went and tried a little bit of bass fishing this weekend and uh, had no luck at all. But uh, I did give it a try. Um, I actually got skunked at the pond. Miss Nightlife, she outfished me. She caught one brim and I caught nothing. So. <laughs> She's over here huddled up by the heater. Not paying me a bit of attention. Alan Thomason says, how old is Hyde? My walker is six this year. Hyde turned four back in June, so he's uh, four and a half. Just about. I guess he's a little over four and a half now. <clears throat> yep, Family River says get a good hound. You got to breed and raise your own. That's the best way to do it. You get exactly what you want when you breed and train it yourself because if it ain't what you want, you won't keep it. Hat maker says, my pap told me that when he was a boy, he had a shepherd dog that treated anything that wanted coon, squirrel, and possum. That's pretty cool. Hat maker, I gotta ask you, buddy, on your name, hat maker hunting efficient. Is hat maker your actual name, or uh, you know your last name, or do y'all make hats? <laughs> Uh, Braden says, what gun do you use? We use a 410 or a shotgun. Um, I've used 410s like when we're treeing pine trees, kind of cut some limbs out of the way. If I've seen the coon, I need to get a good shot on him. 
I've done that before, but nine times out of ten, well, pretty much all the time, I carry a Ruger 2245 pistol, the light pistol, um, and I've got a Vertex red dot sight on it. I used to carry a Browning butt mark with a bull barrel red dot sight on it. Um, I love that gun. It was a really good gun, but I got this uh, new Ruger 2245 because it's a lot lighter. And uh, took a little getting used to shooting him because it was so light. Um, you know, you get into the tree and you're all excited and adrenaline's going and stuff, and you're kind of shaking a little more. And being it so light, you you see it. You you see the red dot shaking with that bull barrel Browning I had. I was able to make better shots with it, but getting used to it. Oh, Coon Killer, how you doing, buddy? Braden says I'm in 22, not a shotgun. Yep, just 22, bud. Hat maker is my last name, but my mom actually does so little toe bottom. That's cool, man. I just wonder. Like to know. Oh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Kind of run slow tonight. I didn't have any actual topics I did want to talk about. Just gonna leave it up to you guys. Uh Thomas Outdoors said, What made you want to use a pistol over a rifle? I live in the mountains of western North Carolina and we're all the time having to go through these laurel thickets and road dinner thickets and stuff like that. And be honest with you, big, big old fat man toting my own self up a mountain is hard enough. I didn't want to tote a rifle, and it was always getting hung on stuff. So uh, I actually started hunting with Kim Bishop. He had a pistol, and uh, I looked at how easy it was for him to tote that thing in there and pop out coons. And I already had the brown and buck mark. I just had to put a red dot side on, and I was good to go. So hadn't uh, looked back since. Uh, Cody Hartsfeld, what's the right way to go about getting rid of a hound that won't hunt? Man, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> there's a lot of ways you can go about that. Um, I don't know, man. Best thing you can do is try to find, I mean, most humane thing you can do, I guess, is try to find somebody who wants as a pet. And if not, give it away to somebody else and be honest about it. You know, tell them exactly what the dog's doing. Um, there's some other guys that will cull the dog, you know, do away with it, put it down, whatever. All that's up to you. Um, if you don't want to do that, though, give it to somebody. Don't, don't dare sell the dog because it's going to give you a bad reputation. Nobody wants to put money on a dog like that. Um, you never know. It could be that the dog makes a great hog dog. It could make a squirrel dog. It could make a bear dog. It make a great farm dog. You don't know. I firmly believe pretty much every dog out there has a purpose. And I always like to try to find another opportunity for that dog. I've always been that way. Um, you know, I've had dogs that didn't hunt, and they end up being sitting on the porch dogs for some old farmer. And he loved the dog, loved to have it. I've had dogs that wouldn't hunt, and they made awesome bear dogs. i give them somebody who bear hunts. So I'd look into something like that. David says, what kind of dog food do you use? Um, I was using the, um, uh, ah, what's it called? Help me out, Caitlin. Um, it's yeah, it was special. Specialty feed makes it. It was a uh, value pack. That's what I was using. And then recently, value or specialty feeds bought out Tops brand. And what they done is actually they're making the value pack dog food and putting it in the Tops bag. So I'm using Tops now because that's what my local guy has and keeps in the stock. But it's the exact same thing as a value pack. So wherever you're buying your feed at, if you can get value pack or Tops, they're both the exact same food in different bags made by specialty foods company so uh not only they are sponsored they are it is what i feed every single day what do you know who makes blue buffalo dog food who general mills general mill like the cereal yeah exactly huh. that's pretty neat <clears throat> foxtrot says do you support trump's wall I talk about religion, but I ain't talking about politics. Uh, I do, I do, uh, I do support Trump, though. I think he's a good president. Randy Hall, hello, Nick. How you been doing? Good to see you, buddy. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well. You guys plan on going to Automotive? Yes, I will be there. Um, I'm actually going to. Hopefully, this year we will have a booth at Automotive, nightlife booth, and then I'll also be there with Sport Dog Brand. So Automotive is one of our favorite hunts to go to. Braden says, do you deer hunt? Yep, I do deer hunt, man. Um, I actually, well, I do, but I don't. Um, I used to deer hunt all the time. I've had leases in Kentucky, South Carolina, Georgia. Let's see. I've hunted in Tennessee, didn't have a lease there. 
Um, of course, North Carolina. Killed deer in all those states. Um, I don't really deer hunt anymore. We've got deer here at the house. Just a little while ago, I was out there shining. There was a bunch of deer. <clears throat> but, no, I don't really deer hunt much anymore. I'm not against it. I do like it. I just hardly ever find the time to get out there. Most time, I'm working all winter long, and then I save my hunting for the nighttime. So, but yeah, I lo I'd love to eat deer meat. Wagner says, are plots good coon dog? Yes, they do. They make great coon dogs. Um, they're very gritty dogs, and they're, a lot of times they're one owner dogs. But plots do make good coon dogs. Hat maker says, when do you retire old dogs? Man, what I do is I just keep hunting them till they don't want to go no more. When they tell me they're done hunting, that's when we just pretty well let them retire. Um, that jug dog I had, <clears throat> he was 13 when he died. That last year he was alive, I took him about three or four times. I just get to feeling bad for him being in the kennel and he would, you know, there'd be times I'd load hide up and he'd just stand there and look at me. So I didn't feel bad about it. And then there'd be times I'd load hide and he'd be over there hopping at the, at the gate. So come on, old man, I'd load him up and take him. And his nose was gone. He had, uh, he had actually cancer in his sinuses, so he couldn't smell real good anymore. And, uh, he didn't treat many coons that last year, but, uh, I did take him. So, but I kind of let them decide not really a certain age to it. Kirsten says, what do you think is the best breed of dog is to hunt? I'm a, I'm a walker man, uh, but mainly just because of looks. So, Trickle Creek, you still feed value pack? Yes, I do. Well, I'm feeding tops. We talked about that a minute ago. Tops and value pack is the exact same food made by specialty feeds, just in two different bags. <clears throat> All right, guys, we've got 50 people watching and only 25 likes. If you guys will, reach up there and hit that thumbs up button and give this video a like. I would appreciate it. The reason why I ask you guys to do that is the more likes and the more comments we get, the higher we rank in the algorithm on YouTube, and it lets people who've never seen us discover us. So, Victor Johnson, first time on here. Walker man, 100%. My man, Victor. Me and him best friends. You are my best friend, honey. But Victor's a good buddy, too, because he hunts walkers. So do I. <laughs> you want a steak cheese? No, I'm good, thank you. Uh, Braden says, have you ever ate deer tenderloin? Man, I love deer tenderloin. Deer tenderloin marinated in onion soup mix for, like, all afternoon, and then fried up with some gravy and biscuits. <laughs> Man, that's good eating. Uh, Wesley says, have you ever noticed that walker hounds with some age, 10 plus, start doing strange things? I've seen a lot of older dogs, but notice walkers are more vulnerable. I don't know if it's just old age or in the breed. Um, pretty much everything I've seen out of the old walkers that I've seen has just been because of old age. I mean, um, their sight starts going, their nose starts going, and I think that can be just about any dog. But, uh, you know, I haven't been around a lot of older dogs of other breeds, so I really don't have nothing to judge that by. Jordan says, does anyone know anything about the blue Gaskin breed? Anybody have ever heard of the blue Gas Gaskin breed? Comment. I'd like to know about myself. Randy says, you about cut his finger off. Man, I hate that. You all right? How'd that happen? Braden says, you ever watch where the red fern grows? Um, I watch it every Wednesday night. No, I'm joking. I have seen that many, many times. Awesome movie. Uh, watch. I didn't know Red Fern Grows had a number two video, had a sequel. I watched that the other night, and it was pretty pretty decent, but definitely wasn't as good as the first one. Looks like someone we know. Yeah. And the guy that started in it looked a lot like old Matt Johnson, Magic Mike, the guy that dances in our video. Kind of looked like him playing in that movie. James McKinley, how you doing, bud? Ray Boy say he sent a video of the Instagram. That pup train. I'll check it out when we get off here, buddy. Jacob West wants to know where Autumn Oaks is. Autumn Oaks is generally the last weekend in August, first weekend of September, right around there, and it's in Richmond, Indiana, at the fairgrounds. Dreadhead says, my fave. Who, what is your fave, buddy? <clears throat> Alan Bridges says, just got my blue tip pup. She is seven weeks old. Can't wait to get her started. Man, I tell you, blue tip pup, they are very cute. 
I'm sorry this camera shakes guys I've got you up here on a tripod and every time I touch it to scroll through the comments it shakes the whole thing so I apologize Kingston Weaver says I have a walker dog the tree's good but does not trail good what should I do how old is that dog Kirkston Kirk Kirkston how old is your dog Thomas Outdoors no I never did read the Red Fern Grows book I'm not much of a reader I have a really hard time getting into any kind of book much. I'm most of, like in school. Um, I learn really well from listening to somebody or seeing something. I don't retain stuff very well if I read it. Alan Bridges says, "Yeah, the grass Gaskin is the biggest breed of hound there are. Awesome dog. Where are they originating from?" Kirsten Weaver says his dog is three. Tree's good, but does not trail good. What should I do? Um, have you singled that dog out? Are you taking it with other dogs all the time? Because a lot of times, if you're taking it with another dog, it is it is me to and what we call me to and Basically, it's letting the other dog do all the work. Um, if you haven't taken that dog out solo, you definitely need to take it out solo and see how it does. Because if that dog can do it on its own, but is not doing it when it's with another dog, you got a serious problem. That dog needs to be hunted solo a ton. Oh, hat maker asking the serious hard questions tonight. Ever eat possum? I have an uncle who ate a roadkill possum and is still doing good. I have never ate a possum. Hey, Billy Bones, I got me a leopard hound. I think the leopard breed is starting to come back a little more. I'm seeing more and more people getting those hunting. Thomas says, about the only book I can read. Uh... Sage says, I have a French Mastiff dog that I don't really notice like that. What do you mean, notice? Timberell says, Pop, no, it was a den. Dang! I hate that. I tell you, what we did have trade in the last few weeks have all been dens. Gaskins are a French descent. Gorge, George Washington was given some and bred them. The ones I've been around were pretty big. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> They originated from France. I'm getting some this month. Huh. Steve says, have you ever read where the red fern grows? Nope, I have not. I don't know how to read. My redneck compension is not very good. Do what? Is that a Gaskin hound? If so, it looks like a blue tick. That's a real pretty hound. Somebody comment on here. Is that one of them? Uh, Ray Boy said he treating a den last night too. Yep, those beautiful hands. I'm sorry I keep shaking this on you guys. Thomas says yes, that is a that Gaskin. That's so pretty. We need one of those. Great. Now we're going to get 10 or 20 of them. Now get one. <laughs> uh, he'll be the bone, says mine's only three months old and got a good bark. Look at that. That's awesome, man. Another one of them Gaskin hounds. Little pup. I tell you, those look like blue ticks to me. Looks like the old school blue ticks that didn't have no brown on them. Braden says, do you hate most tree of possum? We don't. Yes, I do. And uh, when they do, I, I put a stop to it. Dreadhead says, I have a red bone. Can I train without a coon hide? Yes, you can. Best thing to do, Dreadhead, is just take it out in the woods, put it in some woods that's got some coon in it, so you know you got some scent in the air, and if it's got the natural ability in it, it will come out and they will start running. Randy, how you doing, bud? Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> Trickle Creek says, I just took two pups together tonight and knew better. <laughs> All they did was play. I'll tell you, man. That's the way it goes sometimes. But hey, we are coon hunters, so you know we're gluttons for punishment. If we can make it harder on ourselves, we're going to. Uh, Steve says, you need to go read. It's about a little boy who wants to coon hunt and works odd jobs. Been a lot better as well. Yeah, Steve, I've seen the movie like a million times. I just never did read the book. 
Sean says he's seen a couple of them Gaskins at Walker Days. They were real pretty. I think we've seen one at Grand American. I think that's what that dog was that I wanted so bad. Must have been. I'll tell you what, guys. If somebody on here is a breeder or knows, or knows a breeder on the Gaskins, um, you know, somewhere around North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, message me on Facebook or send me an email, nightlifekennel at outlook.com. I, I would like to look into that a little bit. Jordan says, my Gaskin has a ball when it trees and is as loud as a foghorn. Cool. That's pretty cool. What's up, big dog? They're a blue tick. Just close to the original French descents. They have a standard, but are registered as blue ticks. Cool. Okay. Mario, what's going on, buddy? I'm doing well. Hope you are. <clears throat> Thomas says, I like the Gaskin. I've had old blue ticks. Best color of blue ticks you can look out look a lot alan bridges so just sent you the info on gaskin on facebook yes it is the gaskins are blue ticks cool i appreciate it, man i'll look into that never know see that's my thing with a blue tick is these days you know i'm not i'm not real informative on this so don't don't judge what i'm about to say as being an expert or anything but yeah a lot of the blue ticks nowadays have like brown eyebrows brown on the muzzle you know, they got some brown on their legs just a little bit. I just don't like it. That Gaskin look is the blue tick look that I really like. And uh, when I say I want to breed hide to a blue tick female, that's kind of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> is that look. Guys, we're up to 40 likes. If y'all can, hit that thumbs up button for me. I would appreciate it. Blue Gaskins are cold nosed. Some are slow trackers, but good dogs. I'd be fine with that. Tim Riel says, they say the book is better. Yeah, my problem is I can't read. I can't read good. Whatever. Braden says, the real reason we don't get mad is because the big reason is because they get at They eat our deer corn. That's the big reason we hunt coons and possums. Yeah, man. I tell you, though, be honest with you, I mean, cut out all the bull. It don't matter. If you like to tree possums, or if you don't like to treat possum, it don't matter. If you're out in the woods with hounds and join God's green earth and God's country with you and your hound and you're happy, that's all that matters. And I don't care if you're out there trying slick trees and you love it. That's good for you, man. I'm glad whoever's, as long as you're in the woods and you're happy, that's all that matters. I mean, I just, I like to see more people out in the woods with hounds than there have been. And, uh, you know, I don't judge anybody. I don't want to treat possums. But I got buddies that love training, and they don't mind. I got guys that mind, don't mind their dogs running deer. I got guys that don't ever whip their dog for slick training, and that's fine. As long as you're out in the woods, and you're happy with your hound, and you're having a good time, that's all that matters. He'll be bones. Had a red tick and hunted, but did not tree. Hmm. There are also blue Gaskin Bassets. They look like a Basset. No way. No I knew that was coming. <laughs> Me and Miss Nightlife have actually talked about um, when we get married, which we've got a date for that, guys, but we ain't released it yet. But anyway, when we get married and move into our house, um, we've thought about getting a basset for our house dog. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at this. We need that. Is that the Bassett version? Yes! Look at it! Alright. So this is the Bassett version. You see that brown? That's what I don't like on a blue tip. We want a black one. I want the black one. The black and blue. If I can find one, can we have it? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Excuse you. Victor Johnson. With other dogs, he would hunt and tree with them, but never treed by himself so i took him out by himself he ran tree three coons by himself ever since yep there you go george says i haven't had one that tracks slow for me yet i better go knock on wood yeah you better <laughs> cody says any squallers left from walker days no man they sold out like crazy i can't keep a jc squaller here if i bought it brought in a hundred i'd have 200 people want them uh, well, I we'll tell you this, though. What we do have a handful left, guys. We have brand-new Nightlife hats. They are snapback, 
But they got the green logo, kind of like the one I'm wearing. I've got a, like three or four of these left. I got three or four of the blue with the uh, silver background. So if any of you guys want nightlife hats, they're on the website, nightlifekiln.com. They're 20 bucks. Just got a handful left. I'm going to order some more, but uh, we're going to be changing things up on the actual colors and everything. So uh, but if you want these, go get them while they last. Mario says the book is very similar to the movie, but there is some difference between the two, honestly. I like the book better. Y'all going to talk me into reading for too long. Ha ha, find the book on tape. <laughs> uh, Alan says there is a breeder in Black Mountain. Oh my gosh! Yes, let's go. Black Mountain's a long way away. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not that long. Yeah, Robert, I like the old timey blue ticks. Uh, did you meet Walker Bellamy at Walker Days? Uh, be honest with you, buddy, I am really bad with names. I would recognize a face before a name. So, that kind of sounds familiar, though. Uh, Thomas says, I hate the tree opossum, which my dog doesn't. But if I see a opossum sitting up, you bet it's going to be dead. Yeah, I used to knock them out if I seen them. Just get rid of them. Uh... Alan Bridges said, the pup I got is a Gaskin. Randy Hall hates possums. Randy, I hear you, buddy. Gage Gibson, copper dog will tree a field rat, and I let him. <laughs> he said something was there, and there was, so I was happy. <laughs> hey, man, go for it. Clear the field. Hat makers. My cousin says that a pug is the best house dog for one having a dog in the house and for kids. I like a puggle. Uh, pug and beagle mix. I like it. I, I like pretty much all dogs. When it comes to pets, I ain't, you know, they're... We don't I like don't, Shih Tzus or Dalmatians. Yeah, Shih Tzus and Dalmat Dalmatians are ill. Shih Tzus, I don't like a real long-haired dog. Yeah, but uh, most dogs I really like. I want a smaller dog, though. I like just the idea of having a basset. Basically, you got a hound dog with tiny legs. Yeah. I, I like that idea. Now, I'm going to get me a truck. I'm going to start driving a truck for a living. I'm going to give him a little trucker hat and a little poofy vest. And I'm going to name him <laughs> Flash. But you can't match any of your clothes. Yeah, I can't match none of my clothes. Uh, Jordan says, I sent you a pic of the other two I'm getting. I appreciate that on Facebook. Appreciate it, guys. Oh, Stevie May said, would you ever scold a dog for treeing a coon and possum in the same tree? Nope. The coon's there, buddy. The coon is there. I'm not getting, uh, you know, I feel that, that that coon just hit up that tree with that possum in it by happenstance or trying to put you off into shooting the possum out or whatever. But uh, dogs more than likely, I mean, my dogs, I know, um, was treeing, was running the, the coon. Um, now, the pup. I might not be, I might be skeptical, but I'm definitely not going to scold the dog. I've actually treed um, coons and possums the same tree with hide. And he, when I come into the tree with hide, and that coon was in that tree, and that possum was in that tree, he'd ho, 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 and he'd stop and kind of look back at me. And when I went walking in, I thought, man, something's up with this. And uh, I remember walking in there, he ho, ho, ho. And he, you, know, you guys have seen him on the videos. He's like belly up, clawing on standing up preaching to him and he ho ho and he'd get back and kind of sit and look at me i come walking in i said man this thing's gonna be slick and he get three hard locates i'm like you know when i walked in there i thought man this thing's got the meat i walked in there and i went up about halfway at tree and i said big old white possum and i turned and looked to hide and he ho ho and he just kind of sit there and looked at me and i thought boy you going to get it i happened to see a snow set of eyes looked up there thinking there's a second possum sure enough there was a coon Rolled the coon out to him, paid him up, good to go. But he thought he was, he, he could tell, you know, he smelled the possum there too. But uh, he was like, man, I hope dad sure finds that coon up there. Trey Wagner had a walker female climb a tree 30 foot locked down. That's scary, buddy. I've had them climb and fall out and get bad hurt. Anyone ever tree a groundhog? No, but JJ <laughs> Yeah, Miss Nightlife, she actually had a groundhog get in JJ's lot with him. Don't know how. We didn't see a hole. We didn't see a torque fence or nothing. And he killed that bad boy. And she went out there and that thing's laying there and he's just as proud as can be. <laughs> Alan Montgomery. 
He's got. He says a basset is just a vertically challenged hound. Oh. Midget hounds. We need one for sure. Oh, Finley Rivers says I tie my hounds away from the tree, knock the possum out, then I do my corrections. That's very smart. Braden says, what about Smokey and the Bandit? Awesome movie. Awesome movie. Mario says, you do any kind of fishing? I do a little bit of all kinds of fishing. Um, I really like catfishing. And then uh, we have awesome trout waters here in West North Carolina. So um, I've spinnerfished a ton for trout. I mean, I do that with my eyes closed. I've done a little bit of fly fishing. Um, I like fly fishing, but it, it's not. it doesn't come as easy to me as spinnerfishing. fishing. Fish for crappies. Yeah, I, I fished for crappy a couple of times with Dad, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Miss Nightlife don't care. If it's the tiniest brim and she can pull 40 of them out, she's having a ball. <clears throat> Stevie said he treated one like that with his old walker. I assume you mean possum and coon. Finley says he's treated coon and possum in the same tree. How do you handle it, Finley? Wesley Blevins, I knock that possum out and pet my dog. Hey, man, as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Stevie says he can burn them up with a fly rod. I might have to come up there and take a couple lessons. I can tie flies. I can cast and put that thing anywhere I want it. I, I can do everything fly fishing related, and I catch a couple fish. But I can burn them up with a spinning rod. Uh, no, James, he asked if I tried that not light noise amplifier. I forgot all about taking it last night, which dogs never struck anything anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get, I need to give that a try for sure. Film it. That'd be cool. Well, guys, I've been on here an hour and, uh, we've only got 58 people watching. I guess people's out hunting tonight, which I can't blame them. I probably should have been too. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we, uh, Work this thing down for the evening. Uh, let's see here. Season's coming to close here in North Carolina. Hoping to be getting in the woods some more this week. I'm supposed to go out hunting uh, Thursday night with Will here in North Carolina <laughs> if weather is well. What? I told, I told my dad we were thinking about getting a bag of him for a house pet. And he said, if we want to have a llama named Dina for a house pet, we can. It's our house. <laughs> <laughs> Only my dad would do Huh. Co Con brother Coon I can't say that. Darn near caught all the crappy in our pond. That's cool. I like crappy fishing. I haven't done much of that, but Yeah, Walker Days was nothing like it was last year. Nothing like it. And it gets worse and worse. I'll be honest with you guys, because I travel around with Sport Dog, I go to all the major events, uh Walker Days, Grand American Winter Classic, Autumn Oaks. Um, for what I've noticed over the last four or five years is all the events are going downhill. Don't know what it is, but they're all going. And it's not the people putting them on or how they're putting them on. It's just general attendance. And um, another thing, too, like with vendors, there's nothing really new. Uh, lot technology is pretty much all the same. Um, there's no new cool, awesome coon hunting gear coming out. I mean, chaps are all the same. Boots are all the same. Vests are all the same. Leads are the same. Um, you know. I don't know. There's nothing new and exciting going on in the world of all these big events. So, uh, Cody says, looking at a six month old, not star blue tip female E reason not to buy sight unseen. Never buy a dog sight unseen. Always go check it out. Take it to the woods and just see how that dog acts. I know six month old is probably not going to do anything. You say it's not started, but I would at least take it in the woods. And uh, just see how it acts. You at least need to go get around the dog and make sure it's not skittish and it'll come to you and this and that and the other. Make sure it's healthy. Um, you know, I never buy dogs I don't see. Always got to lay my eyes on get a good look at them. Stevie, buddy, have a good one. I appreciate you. Thomas says, why doesn't Will have a dog? He used to have a couple dogs. Uh, he actually had a pup off a jug. But uh, Will's got a lot of school going on. And, of course, he's out there chasing the women. So, Will just does not have time to train a dog. That's that's the biggest issue. Um, he's talked about getting one whenever he gets out of college. So uh, he actually went competition hunting the other night and really enjoyed that. So thinking about training Will how to be a good handler, and then when Nix gets up, if she makes anything, 
have him comp hunt handle uh, Nick's for me. Cody says, seen a video of a pup barking at a cage coon. Where you see, where'd you see that at? Uh, at Mayor, so I want to thank you for texting me that link for nightlife. Yeah, buddy. Anytime. Wesley says, how often you hunt in the off season? And do y'all have a training season? Yeah, our training season, we can't hunt game land, but private land we can run year round. Um, I hunt just the same as I do in season, out season, up until it gets really hot. When it gets to July and August, we'll kick back to like just a couple times a month. And uh, really, a lot of time we're just doing that because we got a pup needs to get in the woods. But, uh, you yeah, know, that's how it goes. All right, Sean, I'll, I'll miss you back later, buddy. Good night. Yeah, Trickle Creek, I agree. UKC's falling off. So you got a KUHN bros. Say he went to Automotive. He's got a Walker pup. You can definitely get him there. Am I going to hunt? Seth Adventures, and I am going to hunt with its parents this weekend. Yep, just check it out. I mean, definitely lay your eyes on it. Uh, James says, do you think coon hunting is declining or just competition? I think coon hunting in general is declining. Um, people don't have... Well, all right, you think about it. Like, here we are. We're, we're all on YouTube tonight. We're not out coon hunting. Um, social media and technology is taking the place of pretty much everything in life. And a lot has to do with the youth. You know, a lot of youth would be rather be doing other things than out hunting. Um, land, like where I live, land is extremely scarce. There's nowhere to hunt. So if a youth wanted to hunt, they couldn't hardly find a place. Um, I think coon hunting in general is going downhill. And I'm really worried about it. I'm concerned about it. I'm afraid that, you know, next 20 years might be a thing of the past. Um, I hope not. I pray not. Um, you know, if they outlaw it, I'll probably be an outlaw. But... Yeah, I think it's going down. David Argo, good night, buddy. Daniel Owen, how you doing? Randy's got it. He says, all about the money hunts now. Uh, Thomas says, I have where the word red fern grows sitting in my backpack. Walker says he was the one filming down at Walker Days. Yeah, yeah. You come by there and uh, film me for a second there. I think, have you got that video up yet, Walker? Uh... Mario says, do you have any kind of sponsorships to get the name out there more? What do you mean by that, Mario? Explain a little better. I, I sponsor a kid. Uh, I don't want to give his name out here. But I do sponsor a kid, and then occasionally I send some stuff when people say they got a benefit hunt or something going on. I send some stuff out for stuff like that. And then, of course, we got a couple field staff. But, uh, yeah, Trigger Creek says you can't, or can't find hunting areas a lot of the problem. For sure, for sure. <clears throat> Cody says shouldn't have said sight unseen just not starting hasn't been in the woods yeah yeah there's nothing wrong with buying that six months old I mean that's pretty common but definitely take a look at the dog make sure it's healthy enough uh Landon Reeves have you been shooting a lot of black coons no buddy I haven't I've only shot a few of them that's what you call the old mountain coons around here um like I went to Sugarloaf Mountain in Polk County and I've traded a couple of really dark excuse me black colored mountain coons there um, but a lot of what you're seeing around here, Landon, in Harrison County, is the coons has got a lot of yellow down their back and yellow stripes on their tail. What that is, back in the 60s and stuff, a lot of the guys around here went and bought coons from like Georgia and the swamps and stuff, brought them up here and stocked this area to hunt. And then uh, that trait just kind of took on with the coons around here. So, Josh Taylor says CHKC is booming around him. Uh, Seth says in Louisiana, he only knows the three people who still coon hunt. <laughs> Wesley says, next 20 years, I'll have a hound be knocking on possums and coons out of promise if I'm alive. Daniel says, declining, supposed to be, supposed to be with me and Kim starting the pup out. Yeah. Don't worry, Daniel. Me and Kim, we're going to hunt with you, buddy. We're going to keep you in the woods. I just now recognize this who it was, who you were, Daniel. Sorry, buddy. Hey, Billy Bones, how many dogs you got? Uh, me, personally, I own three, and then Miss Nightlife has two, so we got five total. Uh, Miss Nightlife has JJ and Jasper, and I have Nix and Tuff. They're 
just a year old, and then hide is four and a half. Uh, Coon Brother says, Pup I got isn't quite a year old yet and was wondering how I start them. Man, just start taking them in the woods. First, you need to make sure you work on your lead training and the dog coming to you when called and kennel manners. Get them used to ride in the box and then go ahead and just start taking them hunting with some other dogs. Somebody who's got some experienced dogs, take them in the woods. Put them in the woods and let them run. They're going to hang around your feet a lot, but eventually they'll get where they go off. Trace Walker says, thanks for all your help. I enjoy watching you every day. Man, I appreciate it. You know, it blows me away when people say they watch every day. Like, they're actually not not exaggerating. And that blows me away. I can't believe somebody, you know, when you guys walk up to me Walker Days, you want to, like, shake my hand. Or I had people want to take pictures with me. That just blows me away. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. But I'm very humbled by it. And I really do appreciate the support from everybody. And uh, we're trying our best to provide a good channel for you guys with some good content. And uh, hopefully some decent advice. And uh, that's what we try to do. And we appreciate you. Thomas says, you glad his grandpa was a farmer because I have 20,000 acres of hunt as long as it is legal. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, Mario, I, I would consider it. Um, i tell you what, just message me on Facebook, buddy, and we'll talk about it. Walker, spell me, says, yes, it's up. I'm going to go check it out, Walker. I'm going to get off here. What's most coons you ever had in one tree? Five. Five's the most I ever had in one tree. <laughs> Wesley says, don't lie. They're all Miss Night Lives. Talking about our dogs. Yeah, that's true. That's completely true. <laughs> Kirsten's back. Kirsten! I don't know if you can see Miss Night Live. There she is. She said, did you miss me? I did, for sure. <sighs> Kurt, Kayla missed you real bad. <laughs> Landon says you got an eight month old pup. He is tree and hard. Man, that's awesome for eight months old. And if you're hunting around Harrison County, Landon, um, you're doing really good. Somebody commented R. Kelly is free. I don't know what that means. Um, it's that singer that got arrested for something. Okay. Trickle Creek says, you like YouTube or Facebook better for kennel promotion? We have a lot of action on Facebook, but not on YouTube, but we haven't put much time in YouTube. I tell you, you're probably going to get more promotion off Facebook. There's, I find, this is what I find, is the, the YouTube thing, a lot of younger, like, there, I have analytics where I can go on there and see who actually watches my stuff. They tell me the age, uh, the gender of the people country they live in and all this different information and generally 90% of our viewers on YouTube are from like 18 to 30 ish in age um, but <clears throat> when you're looking at promoting a kennel dogs and pups and stuff like that Facebook you got a lot of the a lot of the older generation on Facebook watching that following that than you do YouTube so if you're gonna promote a kennel I would probably say Facebook's the way to go and you can even post up videos hunting videos on Facebook too um, I just started the whole YouTube I've actually had the nightlife kennel for a long time and we had a website and I never did promote on Facebook or anything and um, started filming these hunts and it took off on YouTube and then I just moved it over to, I actually had Instagram. Instagram for me was blowing up really good too. And I didn't even really do much with it. I didn't understand Instagram. But Instagram's a good one too. So, yeah, I, I would look at, push your Facebook and try Instagram. Robert Adams says, I'd love to meet you. Man, anytime we'll get together. Thanks, I've always had hounds around, but I've always bought, started pretty hot. I've got a six month old, right? six hounds right now. Uh, Mario says, is it bad I start my pup off in the box? Like it was to the point I would tell him to load up and he would get in the box. Now he rides shotgun with me. I think that's awesome, man. Hatmaker says, when you start the Man Camp channel, YouTube channel. I've actually put the channel together and I've not gone live with it. And I have filmed a couple of videos for that and didn't like them. So uh, it, that's a slow process for me. I would imagine this summer there's going to be more of that stuff. And be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's actually going to be the Man Camp channel. Um, it may just be Nick and Kate. More more or less our life. And have... Oh, what? That's cute. She says cute. Anyway, it might have a Man Camp segment to it per se or man camp videos in it but uh, I've already made the channel 
and I've already put some artwork up for it and uh, filmed a couple little things, but have not gone live with it. But it's in the process. But uh, the man camp thing is going to happen. So we claim it. We're just going to happen. Oh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Randy Hall, them old black coons live way back in the mountains. They're a lot more fun to treat. Yeah, you got a dog when you run them old black mountain coons. Seth's Adventures, I'm thinking about to get one that's a little bit older this summer I can hunt with. Hello? Should get a young pup and work with it. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Get you an old dog, man. Nothing wrong with that. In Alabama, the con the conservation department, I almost said conversation. Conservation department caters to the big money man. Deer hunters are that. They pay 23 per acre to hunt, and they do not want dogs on it. You got that right, and that is nationwide. Cody says, you ever had one of your dogs get bad whooped on by a coon? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I had a buddy one time had a blue tick that got its hind end wore out by a six pound kitten like it blew my mind this little kitten wore it dog out uh, <laughs> Wesley says so much for in the video lol it's good to have a community like this to keep it going yeah man I really appreciate these live videos we have a lot of fun uh, Walker says I have this wipeout pup I can't get till summertime he's going to be an absolute stud wipeout is good blood Robert says I'm older than that. Yeah, I mean we do have viewers. Don't get me wrong. I get got I think you know we even have some people up in their seventies and eighties, early eighties that watch this. But you know that it's not as many. I would say uh, Facebook. There's a lot more people on Facebook. Another thing I, I find too is some people don't understand the subscribe concept to YouTube. And I was talking to a gentleman there the other day, and he's like, I don't want to pay a subscription. And I said, well, it's free. And he didn't know that. And, you know, a lot of people hear the word subscribe, and they think, oh, like subscribing to a magazine or something. you got to pay for it. So, uh, you know, we have to explain that sometimes. But, uh, you know, when people get on here and they find YouTube, uh, man, they love it. You know, you guys know that. True Creek says, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. We've had good luck with Facebook. We never put much time on YouTube. I mean, I, go ahead and push your YouTube for sure. But, uh, yeah. Ronnie Hill, what's going on, buddy? All right, guys. Well, um, I do have a couple of gear reviews coming up. And uh, I'll tell you something. We got a video coming up. I think it's going to be kind of neat. Um, recently, I took in a Garmin 220 on trade. A guy, well, I didn't take it on trade. A buddy of mine needed some money and was wanting to sell it. So I bought it. But it's got a broke screen. So um, I'm actually, I've got the screen in the mail the other day. I got to work on that. So we're going to have a kind of repair Garmin video coming up and uh, go from there. But I, just a couple of review videos coming up. I had a man from uh, China contact me the other day wanting to send me some lights to review. So um, I don't know anything about them, but I'm waiting. He said he was going to send them to me. Got them hopefully coming in the mail. We're going to give them uh, the American once over, see what they're all about. But uh, Randy Hall said, Deer hunters are killing coon hunting. It's sad but true. You got that right. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and probably call it a night. Get off here and we'll spend some time with Miss Night Life. But I do appreciate you guys. We're going to try to continue these live videos every single week on Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Um, sometimes things come up a couple weeks ago. I had the flu. Couldn't, uh, couldn't do a video. But. Uh, Kirsten says, no one talks to Caitlin. Hi, girl. Why, why is in for Miss Night Live? Do you have to turn off your light to hear the dogs? What? Kirsten wants to know if you have to turn your light off to hear the dogs. No, but I do close my eyes. She does close her eyes. <laughs> Question. All right, well, we're going to call it night, guys. We appreciate you. I'm uh, going to be hunting with Will Thursday night. Hope and pray we get on some. Uh, it's been tough hunting lately. Like I said, went down Will's property last night. Didn't strike nothing. That was, that's kind of rare. Kirsten says Kim makes him cut off cut off for a light. <laughs> Turn that light off. I can't hear the dogs. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I can't see. We're gonna get off here. We love you. We appreciate you. Remember. Got some nightlife hats up on the website, nightlifekiln.com. We also got a whole bunch of the sport dog bacon lights. We still got Moots collars glow in the dark too in stock. So if you guys need anything, I know season's coming to close, but if you need anything, let me know. Oh, one last thing before we go, don't get off here just yet. Uh, on our website, we have the nightlife mystery box up and ready. Basically, 
I think it's $55. You're getting almost $70 worth of gear. We're not telling you what's in the box, but I guarantee you what's in the box you're going to love and you're going to use it every single time you coon hunt. And $70 worth of stuff for $55 plus shipping. Um, we're not telling you what's in it or when it's going to ship, but we got a number in mind. Once we reach a certain number of orders, we're going to mail them out. So once you pay, you're just going to sit back, patiently wait for your mystery box to come. You won't know when it's coming, but you're going to love it when it gets there. So if you're interested in that or hats or anything else, nightlifekiln.com also follow us on facebook nightlife kiln if you guys are on instagram you follow us at nightlife kiln we put a little bit different stuff up on there too so but uh in the meantime guys we appreciate you we love you and definitely get out there and treat one for us <laughs>